All right, so let's look a little bit at types, and we're going to see types again down the road here. And uh, but first thing I just want to show is like you know the different string int bool, and that's that's pretty quick. And uh, and then also length, uh, concat, string converge, conversion, conversion, assertion, math, rand, and docs. And so int int float string bool, that's all pretty straightforward. Rune that threw me for a loop when I first started like doing Go stuff. I'm like, what the heck's a rune? And there's the, I guess it's J.R. Tolkien. They talk about runes in his book, so it's a geeky deal. And um, and if you look up what a rune is, it's just basically a character. It's another word for a character. So they don't they don't say character, they say rune. And the way it, it's an alias for N32. I think it's an unsigned N32. So if we look at uh, godoc.org, no, I want go spec. And um, and then uh, numeric types, and right here a rune is an alias for n32, and so it's just you know uh, we talked about UTF-8 being a four-byte character deal, right? Four-byte coding scheme, and so four bytes is 32 bits, 32 zeros and ones, and so if we're storing a character, we need n32, we need 32 zeros and ones because it's four bytes, right? And so that's a rune, and a rune is an alias for an n32. That's it. And, uh, and UTF-8, we already mentioned this, you know, the first, whatever, 127 characters of UTF-8 are ASCII. And those are, that's just a single byte storage system. And uh, so I don't know what that means. That's from Caleb's single byte. If you're only storing eight zeros and ones for that first chunk, or if it's just not paying attention to the other 24 that are there. But anyhow. About that, it does, yeah. you go back to that. Sure. You were saying it runs in character. Yeah. It's like, Well, what we're storing there is we're storing a, a numeric, I you know, a number. Uh, a character. So if it's C, we're going to give it the equivalent int for that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that is I suppose if you had a reason to store an int32 number without using it for a character, you still use that. Oh, I see. Use it for its init, for its. Just for the number. For the number. Yeah, no, I like I like that, and plain is always a good deal. But you know, just come back here, and so we could just do you know, uh, as, I don't know, car. That's gonna be just like I don't know what. There's two hard things in programming, um, and so I'm just gonna do, you know, uh, character. I'll just do character. Now I'm just all over the place. Character. All right, and so format print line. We'll do printf, and um, and just percent s and see what it gives us. So it's saying no, nope, can't do that. Can't do a string like that. It's in thirty-two, and so we could go look at our formatting verbs. And, uh, you know, we could try base 10, D, decimal. Ninety-seven. How would we get, you know, uh, what about if we just do a V, the default thing, what's it give us? Ninety-seven. Uh, you know, and of course we're dealing with numbers, so we could do hexadecimal. Or we can make that look more like hexadecimal by doing that. So are we looking for a way to convert the integer into the character that it stands for? Well, I was just wondering how do I print out the character, right? So if I do a print line, gave me 97. Uh, and, you know, how would I take that and, and actually show it? So how do I convert? A rune to uh, a string. So could I just do string? A. So that did it. Uh, so this is a. Uh, all this stuff was giving me the numeric, right, and 32 stuff, but then when I said make that a string, it looked it up and figured out that's what the string is. Which is kind of interesting because now maybe I could say character is 
because that's 97, right? Let's do that. Still gave me A. So I can say, okay, well, what is 12,146? <laughs> Korean or something. And, uh, you know, if I, if I, it is A, you know, and then I could start to look like how many zeros and ones are stored there. So I could do type. So let's try type. And it says N32. Uh, could I have done explicitly like, um, uh, so var character rune is equal to that. Still N32. So it's just an alias for N32. But it doesn't throw an error. It recognizes rune. Yeah. So uh, int float string rune bool. And then length just takes the length of the string. What's up, Daniel? Is rune considered a number set? A rune is an alias for N32. So yeah, it's just basically N32. Length and concat, so concatenate with the plus sign. And string conversion, string convert. Um, so uh, string conversion, let's see what that is. So string conversion, golang, godoc.org, .org, string conversion. A package string conversion implements conversions to and from string representation basic data types. And these are the two most commonly used. Uh, numeric conversions are ASCII to int and int to ASCII. And so here are two examples, string conversion, ASCII to int. So I'm taking the string negative 42, it's a string, and making that an int. Or I have the, the int negative 42 and I'm making it a string, int to ASCII. A to I, which sounds like an island or something, a to toi, toi, in the Tahitian islands. A to I and I to A. So that's string conversion. And then we have a conversion versus assertion. And so we'll get to that in a second. But conversion is basically casting. But you call it, you know, a lot of times in programming it's called casting, but it's called conversion here and in Go. And uh, assertion is for interfaces. We'll see that in a second. And then the math package, we look at the RAND function and a little bit more about reading docs. So Go is statically typed. Languages like JavaScript are dynamically typed, and this is a big difference between Golang, statically typed, and other languages that are dynamically typed. Strong typing, stack typing helps prevent errors, right? Helps you be precise, and uh, yeah. So it's static. Static type means that error, error checking is done at compile time, and it won't compile, right? And dynamic type is uh, it just you know it'll compile and see if it and see if it and it'll error when it's running, I think. Okay, here we go. A language is statically typed if the type of a variable is known at compile time. This in practice means that you as the programmer must specify what type each variable is. So like Java, C, and C++. The main advantage here is that all kinds of checking can be done by the compiler, and therefore a lot of stupid bugs are caught at a very early stage. A uh, language is dynamically typed if the type of a variable is interpreted at runtime. This means that you as a programmer can write a little quicker because you do not have specified type every time. Most scripting languages have this feature, so there is no compiler to do stack type checking anyway. But you may find yourself searching for a bug that is due to the interpreter misinterpreting the type of variable. Luckily, scripts tend to be small, so bugs uh, have not so many places to hide. That's dynamic typing versus static typing. So static typing, variable is known at compile time. Dynamic typing, type of variable is interpreted at runtime. <coughs> So here is uh, printing out the type of a variable with percent %t and the print, 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 print f and using formatting verb of that percent %t and the forward, the backslash n is just a new line. It's an escape character so you'll see escape characters and that means uh, I don't want to print n but n is, stands for new line. So escape character. There's also one t backslash t that's put in a tab. And so printf, print line, and I could get in, I could get the the type both ways. 
with printf and percent %t or just print line and reflect type of. That gives me int both ways. And so here's, you know, that's, that's an int, the 30, and 30.74 is a float 64. And uh, those are spelling errors, which is what, or my web storm saying, hey, you got a spelling error, which is why those variables are underlined. But, but here we have uh, F name Jane, last name Doe, and we have double quotes for Jane and back ticks for Doe. And, and um, there's a cool way they described that. I can't remember the way they described it, but I was reading that just last night or the night before about how they described it. But, so anyhow, there's, uh, they're both strings. I think this one... This maintains white space, so if I want to jump down and have multiple lines and things, the back ticks do that. Uh, here we have rune literals, and so there I'm creating a rune, and it's, you know, not back ticks, but just single quotes. And uh, it tells me that's int32 when I do that, and we saw that rune is an alias for int32, and here's that thing about rune is just a letter or a character. And, uh, and rune literal represents a rune constant, an integer value identifying a Unicode code point. So that's pretty much what we just figured out. A rune literal is expressed as one or more characters enclosed in single quotes. Um, you know, one or more characters in single quotes. Within the quotes, any character may appear except new line and unescaped single quote. Okay, unescaped single quote. A single coded character represents the Unicode value of the character itself, while multiple character sequences being with a backslash encode values in various formats. Multi-character. Oh yeah, yeah. You could use single quotes in JavaScript. Yeah. Nope. Sure. One language at a time. That's my new mantra. Runes is for N32 because UTF-8 is four bytes. Uh, so What's this doing? Rune D, reflect type of, so it's just showing us percent T versus type of, reflect type of. And here we have, uh, uh, let's see, we've got going from 0 to 999, looping. So there's the initializer, the i equals 0. Here's the condition, i is less than or equal to 999. And then here is the post. Add one each time, and so uh, while this is true, this is going to run format print line, print line, print the number, and then print a dash, and then convert that number to a string. And so you could see all the different ASCII characters or whatever, and on up. It's kind of fun to run just to look at all the different characters. And here is um, bool, so just doing the type of bool. So we've looked at Boolean, numeric, and string. Boolean represent true, true or false, right? That's it. It's not like in other languages where you have truthy or zero or one, evaluate to true or false, or def defined, undefined, or... So... Uh, uh, you have uh, implementation specific sizes. Well, that's interesting. It's determined by, by your CPU word size, 32-bit or 64-bit. So word size is how many zeros and ones your CPU can process at a time. Older computers, 32-bit. Older, even older computers, 16-bit. And uh, today's computer is 64-bit. And so if, uh, if you use a int or a uint, then those are going to be either 32 or 64 bits, depending upon the machine for wh on which the code is compiled. Right? But mostly, you know, ours will be 64. Uh, so int 64, uh, uint 64. This threw me so when running I... running is an example from the server versus from the client. So it's running on whatever the server process yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so when you upload to App Engine, it, it compiles on App Engine, I imagine. I think that, I mean, logically that makes sense, right? Somehow I don't trust myself to just say that's the way it is when I didn't build it and I haven't read that about it. No, it's, it's illogical, but, you know, what you So this is just, uh, you know, word size. 
How many people didn't know word size before? That phrase. I just didn't know word size. I know what a word is. I just never knew that you could like sum up what that means, having 32-bit or 64-bit. Yeah. You could be like, hey, this computer has a 32-bit word yeah. size. Yeah. 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 Really yeah, no. Also, about the classes normally, they never get that technical and talk about uh, like you said 32 bits versus 64 bits in one go. That's what the that's what the explanation said. Yeah, mm -hmm. that one. And uh, that's per cycle of the processor. And so like for each character or whatever, you know, there's like so many cycles. That deep computer science stuff, they don't really, that's what I was talking about earlier when I said they don't really like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it's cool that you are covering Oh, that. thanks, that's man. Yeah. Whatever. I'm thorough to a fault <laughs> sometimes. Thorough towards not moving quickly enough. Um, yeah, time. clock speed is cool too. But okay, so here we have a. Uh, also, I forgot, I'm glad we came back, but we have uint. So u stands for unsigned. So if we have eight bits, right, that we're going to store, we could store 0 to 255, or we could store negative 128 to 127. This has a sign, it's negative. We're not using a sign here, it's unsigned. We're just staying on the positive side, right? So uh, that's the difference between unsigned and, si and just int, which is signed. And why is this one go to only uh, 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 127? Why not negative 128 to, to 128? Because that would be 256. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, 256 is cool, it'd be 257. Because you've got uh, it, you're eight bits. With eight bits, you have two to the power of eight possible combinations, right? Yep. So if we had two bits, it'd be two to the power of two, which would be four. Uh, that's making no sense <laughs> if you're listening to this and you don't know it. But, but if you have one light switch, you could store two messages. With two light switches, you could store four messages, right? Both lights could be on, both could be off, and you could have the right on, the left off, or the left on, the right off. Four messages, four possible states. With three light switches, you could store eight. And the way you figure that out is two to the power of n. How many light switches is the n? So two to the power of three is two times two times two is eight, right? And so eight possible combinations when you have three circuits. And the base is two, so it's two to the power of n. Two is the base. So if you have two to the power of eight, you got two to the, if you have eight possible zeros and ones or ons and offs, then you have uh, 2 to the power of 8 or 256 combinations. And this is 256 right here, right? Whoops, I just keep trying to highlight text, which is a picture. And that's 256, 256 possible combinations, right? Zero. And, that, and this one down here is 256 because zero is in between them. Uh, strings. There's a series of characters, a UTF-8 encoding, ASCII's a 7-bit character series, 128 letters. I guess they use one of the bits for something else. UTF-8 are those same 7 bits, multiple bytes for other characters. UTF-8 is multi-byte character encoding. Other characters could be 2 bytes, 3 bytes, 4 bytes. Chinese characters would probably be 4 bytes per character. Golang uses UTF-8 because Rob Pike and Ken Thompson were partially inventors of UTF-8. You create a string with double quotes or backticks. Backticks can be multiple lines. These two pipes right here, I just did that for or, because that's or and go. Backticks can be multiple lines. Escape sequences, uh, strings support escape sequences like backslash n for new line or backslash t for a tab. So you saw that I was just putting in a new line right here. A back tick is a, that's a single quote, and there's back tick. Oh, gotcha. It's like top left of your keyboard under escape. Yeah, tilde without shift. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, I thought you said tilde without shift without the F. <laughs> hearing, I'm hearing. So how do you write a multiple, go back one, <clears throat> multiple byte character? I think it just figures it out for you. That's one of the things I was interested in. Like, oh, if we just have a A, letter A, which is a part of ASCII, can we see how many zeros and ones are there? How much got stored? If it's storing all 32 or just 8? I'm sure there's some way, but you don't have to worry about it. It's just like FYI how it works. So here are the different uh, escape characters. So tab, new line. There's a few others. 
And uh, here, here are some of them in use. Hello, world. How are you? So you can see how that printed out some escape characters. And string types, sequence of bytes. Strings are immutable. You could find out their length, and you can access them with indices. What does all that mean? Hopefully I have examples. Uh, sequence of bytes, immutable. You can't change them. That's what immutable means. It just If you change it, it reassigns it to a new variable, or assigns to your variable a new value. Um, we'll see accesses of it by indice in a bit. So here I have uh, intro is equal to a string. I could turn that into a slice of bytes if I want to actually see the slice of bytes by, cast, by using conversion. And then I could see, hey, these numbers, right? F, capital F, is 70. And 70 corresponds right there to ASCII, capital F. 111 is 0. 111 is right here. O, sorry, not 0, it's O. Lowercase O. That's looking matrixy. I was trying to figure out immutability, if I could prove immutability, but like, let me just prove that, you know, something changed. So I had a string intro, and, uh, and then I, I printed intro, I printed the address, and then I changed intro to ha 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 ha, and I printed the string again, and I printed the address, and the, the strings are different, obviously, but the addresses are same. I was thinking it might be different addresses, like, oh, it stored it. But it's, so it's immutable, meaning, uh, maybe I can't go in here to four score in seven years. Maybe I just figured this out and say, let me change this this character F. Did I prove that there? Let me just change this character F to G or something. And um, so an example of that immutability would be, um, let's see, where is that? Types, slices, types, and strings, and uh, immutable. So, uh, oh, so here I was trying to do that exact same thing. So I said intro at zero, right? So that's me accessing just this character. So I'm, that's an index right there. I'm saying give me that character and set it equal to 70. And that is like, no, I'm not going to do that. So that maybe proves immutability. Right, I won't let you do it. But I can change it right there. <laughs> All right. So we'll, we'll stop with length unless you guys want to have more and not head out. I'll totally do it. You guys uh, want more? Code time, code time. It's a full, full load. Cool. So we'll pick up on uh, this one on length. Uh, yeah. So.